British guy and right. Do you smell that? No, it's not the stench of rotting ham in my fridge. No, that is the smell of disrespect. I'm gonna find every Premier Club's one footballer who have been absolutely robbed of their dignity in not getting a World Cup squad ticket, which they deserve. I'm gonna see who should definitely have gotten their squad. Because, I mean, some of these lads, I'm not sure whether they'd be caught peeing in the national coach's pint of milk, but something has gone seriously wrong. Oh, and by the way, before we start this video, I just wanna praise you, every single one of you legends, because we, as a community, me and you, yes, even those of you out there who are currently contemplating whether or not they should practice kissing on their dog, no, me and you just won best content creator at the Football Content Awards, oh, I'm sorry, what? Uh, the guy with a stinking scarf around his neck? Everyone who voted or watches these videos or just supports me in any way, you are an absolute legend and this award belongs to you too. And I just want to say a huge thank you. I mean, you are all absolute legends. Yeah, even you at the back of the room eating paste. Right, let's go. Arsenal Gabriel Magalis. If I'm Gabriel, then right now, I would probably feel like biting the head off a snake. I mean, just absolutely clouded with rage. I mean, sure, I mean, he's never been capped by Brazil once. So this can't have been too much of a surprise. I mean, let's be real. There's more chance of the Brazil coach Tite, someone who looks like Dracula's granddad, by the way. There was more chance of him publicly admitting to taking showers with his dog than there was of him giving Gabriel a call. But come on, he's a rock solid center half, sitting top of the Premier League. You know, the best league in the world and he's only started in one defeat this season. I mean what? I mean choosing to take Gleison Bremer instead. Oh, to be fair, I just thought okay in the event of shirts, but I mean there's nobody remember that Gabriel was Juve's first choice transfer target in June. Seeing all his Brazilian buddies fly after Qatar, but well, he has to stay at home eating breakfast with their spoons and sitting down to watch Matt Hancock nibbling on a plate of monkey sick or be forced to fed a jar of Anton Dex poo. I mean, to be fair, I, I don't watch the show, but still, Gabriel, there's no way he should be forced to stay in London this November. Honestly, choosing Gleison Bremer over him, it's a mistake. Ask the Villa Emiliano Bodilla. Okay, considering his good reason for him, I just know there'll be some mashed potato eating Aston Villa fans who think that Danny Ings should have gone to Qatar. I mean, but let's be honest, if Southgate did choose Ings for his squad, he'd probably have half the country's fans demanding he'd be arrested on the spot. If there is an Aston Villa player who deserves a World Cup spot, no, it's not Coutinho. Maybe at an absolute push, maybe Emiliano Bandia. I mean, yes, Aston Villa most be in a turgid, boring unit. About as entertaining as watching two cows try to kiss, but still, I know he starts a season of nothing pretty. I mean, one goal and zero assists for a 40 million pound playmaker. Yeah, that's a big pile of goat manure. But, 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 in his place is Thiago Almada, a 21 year old attacking midfielder who plays for Atlanta United. I mean, he's Miguel Almiron. Before Miguel Almiron got his big move, he is just a kid playing MLS football. Are you really choosing to overlook a Premier League regular like Badia to bring in someone who plays every week for a football team with Brad Guzan and Nets? And even then, this season, six goals in the MLS. Just six. Doesn't that just make you sick at your nose? Justice for Badia, former Philip Billing. Does nobody realize just how good Philip Billing has been this season? This man, a former Huddersfield Town Chris Packard, sure. I mean, he's been an absolute midfield monster at times for Bournemouth in the Premier League. I mean, come on, four goals already this season. He can play defensive midfield, attacking midfield, he even filled in as a centre forward against Southampton, and most recently it was shoehorn under the left wing. What a useful utility man for Denmark to bring to Qatar, and yet, no! You're instead choosing to concentrate on a washed up Thomas Delaney, someone who hasn't even won a match in Sevilla's midfield this season. Not one single win. Tommy D is a 31 year old, passed at milkshake of a footballer now, and uh, Billing. He's in the prime of his life. Ozzy, the fact he's not even in the squad. No, I mean, it, it's not going to anger me. I'm not suddenly going to chuck a plate of lasagna off the wall, but still, it's not the right pick. Brentford Ivan Tony. I'm not saying Ivan Tony should have gone to the World Cup, but if the squad was picked this week, he would have. Things are so close between him and Callum Wilson. I mean, Wilson currently has a cold, steezy all over his room, while Tony just scored two at the end. He had the fact that the Premier League's best penalty taker has been left at home. Let's be honest. It's very harsh. Brighton, Adam Webster. Okay, really, there are a lot of Brighton players going to the World Cup. Are there any real disgraces left behind? No, oh, I mean, Christ, well, if Danny Welbeck had me given a Qatar plane ticket, I honestly think most English fans would have choked on their Coco Pops. Maybe at a push, an absolute push. I don't know. I guess Adam Webster has had a better 18 months than Harry Maguire. But then again, I mean, that's not hard. My diabetic cat has been in better form than that walking toilet. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have actually picked Webster for the England squad. But I don't know, considering Maguire has been about as solid as a bucket of poo in popcorn, then yeah, Webster would have a reason to complain. Chelsea kept Aris Balaga. I don't understand the Spain squad. I just don't. 
Lads, Luis Enrique has chosen to leave the world's most expensive goalkeeper at home to instead pick guys from Brentford and Brighton. I'm convinced Enrique has not watched any Chelsea matches this season because lads, Kepa actually chucked in five world-class performances together in a row. I mean, he played nearly every Champions League group stage match and I'm telling you, he's been an utter revelation. I know he recently picked up an injury, but I mean, it's not a serious injury. Are you really telling me that his performances on the Graham Potter this season where it's honestly be like watching Batman between the sticks? I know he is injured, but he's coming back from injury soon. I mean, the guy's got the reflexes of a cat. He's in the form of his life. Are you telling me that he's not at least, at least the third best Spanish goalkeeper on the planet? He has been one hell of a goalie this season. So choose and just let him rot in his London flat. I actually believe that that decision is a complete and utter joke. Kepa has been a monster this season. Chris Palace, Jeffrey Schlupp. Why? I'm legitimately at a loss. Ghana are not exactly blessed with an exciting crop of African talent right now. I mean, that's why left backs from Reading are still making the squad. So I'm confused. When someone like Jeffrey Schlupp is no longer a Crystal Palace bench warming cheese stain, but is actually playing every week in Patrick Vieira's midfield, why? Why in a kitten's left eyeball have the Ghana FA chosen to leave him at home? I mean, he's the perfect squad player. He can play anywhere on the left, defense, midfield, even on the right, or as a goddamn center forward. I mean, in his career, he has literally played in every single outfield position on the pitch. He's still in his 20s. 20s. He's a Premier League regular. He's actually a Premier League champion who was once offered a trial at Man United nine years ago and yet apparently not good enough for Ghana. I mean, Baba Rahman has made the squad. A fella still contracted to Chelsea but has the natural footballing ability of a slice of toast that your cat just weed on. Anzi, he's Chelsea's modern day answer to Winston Bagard. What has Schlupp done? I mean, did he run over the manager's cat? Someone explain to me, why is he being snubbed? I haven't seen Jeffrey so disrespected since season one of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air. Everton, nobody. Nobody. <laughs> Don't worry, there is nobody, absolutely nobody. Maybe at an absolute push, James Tarkovsky might have liked a phone call, even if it was just to humor him. But really, no, sorry, I mean, who else is there? I mean, do I honestly believe that Neil Mopé should be playing for France? I think that would be about as clever an idea as Didier Deschamps choosing to burn down his house. Just, ah, think about it. No? Full and burnt Leno. Oh, come on, let's be real. No Fulham player was left shamefully out of a World Cup squad. The ones who deserved to go went, and the ones who didn't, didn't. I mean, come on, who is going to look me in the eye and tell me that Willian should be at the tournament with Brazil? If you truly do believe that, I can only assume you're someone with such a weak skull that you probably get brain freeze from sipping a pint of milk. There's nobody who deserves to make it who didn't make it. Maybe at an absolute push, Maybe Burt Leno, who's been pretty great for Fulham this season. Maybe had a chance of sneaking past Kevin Trapp to be Germany's third choice goalie. But even then, probably not, because he's playing for Eidrek Frankfurt in the Champions League. Yeah, I don't know. Finding one for Fulham is tough. Leeds, Ilan Melier. I don't understand why Ilan Melier didn't make the France squad. I'm sorry, but Hugo Lloris and Steve Mandanda obviously deserved their playing tickets, but did it in shops? Choosing to overlook an Ellen Road wonder kid. Someone who shows absolute maturity beyond his years by playing week in, week out in the pressures of the Premier League. Despite being somebody who probably still gets asked for ID down the pub. I mean, for whatever reason, that man probably won't get hit by puberty until he's 34. And his dad probably hasn't even taught him to shave, yes? But anyway, surely this will be a chance for Deschamps to bed Melier into squads. I mean, no, he's obviously not going to play, but just give him a taste of what going to a World Cup is like, as he's clearly a future France number one. But now, you're choosing to give that spot to Alphonse Ariola, a man who hasn't even played a single 90 minutes of football in the Premier League this season. Instead, he's just been given Conference League matches in a West Ham shirt, keeping goal against the mighty Viborg and Silkborg. Two teams just sound like a cheap brand of Swedish beer. Honestly, it's a joke. Leicester, James Justin. Maybe, maybe James Justin deserved a World Cup spot now that Ben Chilwell is injured. I mean, he is a, a very good left back. I, and I know, he and the rest of his lesser teammates had an absolutely rotten start to the season. But let's be real, he's probably in England's form left back of the last month. Being part of a defence which only conceded one goal in his last five matches. Even that was just a Kevin De Bruyne for a kick. And I think he can also play on the left wing and a back five. Then yeah, maybe Justin might have felt like their Southgate snub was a wet slap in the face. Maybe. Liverpool, Thiago Alcantara. Why? <laughs> Honestly. Why? Whatever about Roberto Firmino being overlooked by Brazil. I mean, Spain just refusing to bring one of the midfield generational talents of the 21st century. Does nobody realize that Thiago Alcantara is honestly one of the greatest footballers in the world? Imagine telling someone when he was arguably Bayern Munich's most important player when they won the Champions League in 2020. Imagine telling someone that actually Spain won't even be bringing him to the next World Cup. This is a guy who by all rights could have just committed his international future to Brazil and in doing so he would without a doubt 
be going to the World Cup and have a real chance of winning the World Cup. I mean, I'm sorry. Do you really think Tite would have chosen to omit Thiago in favour of a soggy cabbage like Fred? I don't understand this. I know Thiago has a body made of oatmeal. But I mean, he is fit now. He doesn't have any injuries right now. And yeah, you're telling me that he's not better than PSG's Carlos Soler? I know Spain have stacked midfield talent. But choosing that an absolute world-class magician like Thiago just sit in his Liverpool flat. Sadly, spending this month being fed sausage rolls and Milky Ways on the couch whilst watching Love Actually with his wife. I honestly think this is a hideous disgrace. Man City Sergio Gomez. Okay, feel free to tell me that I got wet spaghetti for brains. But, but... But, is there not even the tiniest shout from Manchester City wonder kid Sergio Gomez to make the Spain squad? I mean, he's 22 years old, he spent 8 years in the Barcelona Academy, and now has 6 months of Pep Guardiola tactics under his belt. I mean, he's played 10 times this season and very much impressed. I don't know, I think he's more of an exciting option to bring than a 27-year-old Valencia left-back Jose Gea, who's um, only contributed to 3 wins this season for a team stuffed 10th in La Liga. I mean, as backup left-backs go, I think Gomez deserves a bit more respect. Man United, David De Gea. Yeah, still sticking with Spain. And I'm sorry, but Luis Enrique, what is going on? David De Gea has been brilliant for a solid year. I'm sorry, but ever since that Europa League bottle job against Villarreal, when it looked like Dean Henderson was the future, and that then Spanish misfit would be tumbled off in a suitcase to AC Milan, well, ever since then, De Gea has got his head down. And I mean, at Brentford Horror Show aside, he's been mostly superb ever since. Are you really trying to tell me that when it comes to four, he's been worse than the goalies of Bryson and Brentford? I mean, if you want to bring one of them, fine. But both mid-table plotters out of a genuine world star like De Gea? How does a guy go from being Manchester United's best player and nearly earning a move to Real Madrid and yet still fails to make the Spanish squad? How does it compute that a guy who is deemed good enough to be offered a contract in excess of £300,000 a week is apparently, in the eyes of Enrique, not good enough to get in the Brentford team? I, I promise you, if I remember to deserve or Thomas Frank were offered De Gea on a free, do you think he would instantly rot on their bench? Nope. Uh, pretty sure Sanchez and Rea would be tossed into the nearest garbage bin. I know they can play out well with the ball on their feet, but I mean, still, I think it's disrespect. Newcastle's Finn Botman. Where do you want to start with Newcastle? First of all, leaving Joe Linton out of the Brazil squad is hands down a joke. I mean, compare the last year of Joe Linton's career to the last year of Fred's. And I'm sorry, but the Newcastle midfield monster makes the Man United misfit look every inch. A slow, cumbersome dwarf who's about as creative as pooey toilet paper. And I, I honestly think Alison Maxwell should have had a chance at the France squad, but I think the real insult is Sven Botman. There's a powerful 22 year old defensive monster who uh, is yet to lose a single match for Newcastle. I mean, he's on course to arguably be the club's best defender for 40 years. I mean, he is currently an unbeaten centre back sitting third in the Premier League. I mean, sneering down his nose at Virgil van Dijk. And yet, he doesn't even get a plane ticket. I mean, Louis van is someone who once thought it was acceptable to pick Tyler Blackett as a Manchester United centre back. So don't tell me that man is all of a sudden a centre half snob. I know Holland has some good defenders at the minute. So what I mean, make room? Stefan de Vries is a fairly reliable inter Milan centre half short, but I mean, he's 30 and has found himself sitting on the bench seven times this season. He is not the future and without a shadow of a doubt, does not deserve a spot over Botman. Come on, Louis, sort it out. Running a far for Renan Lodi. Uh, nobody, nobody. And running a far deserves a plain ticket. I mean, I had a push, an absolute push. Renan Lodi has been in good form at left back for a solid run. But still, I mean, is he really making Brazil's squad? For the sake of this video, he probably deserves a shout, especially considering he was a brilliant little Liverpool Madrid left back last season. I mean, everyone knows he can do it, but yeah, no, probably not. Southampton, Douge Coletta Char. Look, Douge Coletta Char has not been in brilliant form for Southampton. I mean, he's in half, he's only actually been part of one win so far, but come on, to not even make the Croatia squad? When a 33-year-old forgotten chew to it, like they and love and Dutch, someone who probably just spends his days just eating pie at Zenith St. Petersburg, I know he's part of a winning machine, but come on. Let me ask you this. Would he, right now, star for his old club Southampton in 2022? No! I don't think he would. I mean, Christ, but Tomogaj Vida still make the squad. Someone who looks like an orc with a man bun. He's 33 years old and playing for AK Athens in Greece. You are omitting a guy playing elite Premier League football for an elderly crumpet wasting away in the Greek league? Sorry, but something is seriously wrong. Saw him Ryan Sessegnon. There was definitely a shout for Ryan Sessegnon to make the England squad. I would have picked him. He's probably been the most informed English left wing back over the entire season. West Ham Kurt Zuma. I want to make it very clear. Kurt Zuma is probably in my top five least liked footballers in the Premier League. As you, this guy bodies cats around his kitchen. Clearly, he's about as likable as mud at a picnic. But over the last 18 months, he's been great for West Ham. An absolute rock in David Moyes' defence. And considering he was inches away from appearing in an actual European final in May, he might have thought he's done enough 
to deserve a plane ticket. I mean, Axel Kisasi has gone instead, and he's a risk. He's 24 years old and doing well for Monaco, but he doesn't have a single cap to his name. And Zuma has 11. This might be too much for Kisasi. I mean, if he winds up on the pitch, making his France debut at a World Cup, the nerves could just force him to just play somebody onside and then get sick all over his feet. With Zuma, yes, this guy seems to think he lives in an itchy and scratchy cartoon, but he is a more reliable pick. Surely. Wolves Daniel Pudence. Maybe I'm wrong, but I, I've always thought that Daniel Pudence is a brilliant footballer. I mean, yes, Wolves have been awful this season, but so? There's still three other Wolves players in the Portugal squad. Pudence is a skillful, nippy midfielder who knits attacks together. And in buzzing behind Cristiano Ronaldo would have been a strength. Having Pudence come off the bench to keep possession and waste time. Brilliant idea, right? And yeah, now he's been left behind for Porto's Otavio. I mean, uh, I think it's harsh. Anyway, guys, what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Let me know what player has been unruly snubbed for the walk. Let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and talk to you in a while.